What's up everybody, welcome to a nice little beginner level Photoshop tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to recreate the Sin City effect with your own photographs. Um, you know, Sin City 2 is coming out here in, I think, October, and I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people that are wondering, like, oh man, that looks awesome, how can I do that to my own pictures? Well, it's actually a hell of a lot easier than you might think, and to kind of show you what I'm talking about, the effect that we're going to be doing here in a sec, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Now, by the Sin City effect, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about already, but just in case, basically they're just they're photographs or you know movie footage that are predominantly like really, really dark, um, lots of really dark, heavy blacks, but usually the subjects and sometimes even their immediate surroundings have been brightened up, and you know that makes them really pop off of that background because they're typically lighter, almost sometimes even to the point of being just pure white. Like so with Mickey Rourke's character, for example, in the movie, his bandages, they were just pure white. They didn't necessarily look realistic, but they carried over the tone from the graphic novel, and it just fit really well. The art direction in that movie is just phenomenal, probably one of the best ever. Um, so the techniques that we're about to do, and kind of looking at these examples that are scrolling through, this is kind of what I'm talking about. These were pictures that I uh, just took with a basic like $100 point-and-shoot camera. It wasn't anything too special. And um, as long as the photos are clear bright and actually focused, which is probably the most important thing, um, you can actually create these effects very easily in Photoshop, and it's not anything too advanced. Um, the tutorial we're about to do here, I'm going to be using Photoshop CS6, which is the newest version. Uh, but the good thing about this, because it is kind of a beginner tutorial, we're not going to be getting any, into anything that's too advanced. And Photoshop, by nature, even though new versions keep coming out, um, the way the program operates and the layout and everything it really doesn't change too much. So even if you're on an older version of Photoshop, even back through probably CS2, you should be able to pick up on what we're doing and follow along. So let's get into the tutorial. Um, I've got my Photoshop here at CS6 open. Let's go into, um, you can see my layout here. Yours may look a little bit different, but essentially it's pretty much the same. Um, I've got my toolbar over here on the left. My layers panel over here on the right. And uh, this tutorial, again, is going to be just for beginners. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to start just by opening up one of the original photos from actually one of the examples that I just had in the video a second ago. And I've got that picture right here on my desktop. And I'm just going to drag this into Photoshop and open it up. And now I'm going to switch into full screen mode by hitting F. There we go. I usually like to work in full screen mode like this because I think seeing the wallpaper in the background is a little bit distracting. Also, it gives me some, um, you know, the ability to move my picture around by holding down space and a couple other things. Basically, just a little bit more neat. Um, so anyways, I've got my picture open here, and uh, this is actually a, a building in my hometown of Syracuse, New York. Uh, it took a while ago. And this picture, you know, it's nothing special. It's just a picture of a building. I even took it with just a basic Olympus, um, like eight megapixel point and shoot camera, you know, nothing too special. Um, so I was just lucky enough that this building just by nature is actually pretty badass looking. It's very like old school art deco, like it should belong in you know Gotham or something like that, not Syracuse. So I've opened up the picture and you know, what I usually do when I first open up a picture, if I'm going to be playing around and editing it in any way, is I like to go over into my layers window right over here. And I right click on my background layer and actually make a copy of it by selecting duplicate layer. All that does is it basically gives me two exact um, you know, duplicates of my original picture. So I can play with this one up here at the top, edit it, do whatever I want. And if for some reason it goes like horribly awry and it's just a disaster, I can always go back to my original and start over again. All right. So my next step here and what I'm about to do is I'm actually going to um, turn this photograph just simply into black and white. All right. And I'm going to keep it really simple. Instead of getting into adjustment layers or any of that stuff, I'm actually just going to go up to edit, sorry, image, adjustments, and all the way down here at the bottom is a uh, option here to desaturate. And just a really quick, easy way to make it black and white. Now, technically all that did is just sucked all of the color out of it. So it turned the saturation or the color saturation to zero. And now technically it is now black and white, but to make a really good black and white photo, there's obviously many other steps that go into it. So what I usually do is once I hit desaturate, I'll then go a little bit further and go up to adjustments and actually play with both the contrast and the levels. And I'm going to start real simple by going to the contrast and I'm going to bring this over to the right. 
And basically what the contrast does is it just improves the overall richness of the photo. So basically the dark tones, like the blacks become blacker, the light tones become lighter, and generally just makes your photos look a little bit more rich. So if you can see that, bring it all the way out. If we go back to the original, you see it's, you know, it's black and white, but it's all, it's, you know, predominantly gray. And as I bring that out, all the dark tones of this image just pop right out. So especially if you look down here by the Niagara Mohawk logo, as I bring that out, boom. All right, and that's kind of where I want this picture to look, or what I want it to look like, sorry. Um, so now I'm gonna go up to Image, and I'm actually gonna do a little bit more. And again, I was just up here at Contrast. I'm now gonna go into Levels. And basically what Levels does is allows me to either boost or cut dark tones, mid tones, and light tones. So we're not going to get into this too much, but what I'm going to do is take this slider right here, which is my mid-tones, and I'm going to bump it up a little bit. And you can actually see the photo is getting darker. So this is almost like a bit of an extension or a, a more in-depth contrast control. And I'm also going to bring the light tones here over to the left. So essentially what I kind of just did was I darkened the overall photo by moving this center slider over to the right. So the darks have gotten darker, but I can now actually bring the light tones over, which is going to brighten up those brighter areas of the picture. All right, so that's just a really quick and easy way to make a pretty decent looking black and white photo. Um, again, it's just a couple of basic steps. Obviously you can get a little bit crazier with it, but just to get a good simple one, you know, those couple of steps will get you there. Um, so just a couple of things about, you know, before you even get into Photoshop with these pictures, um, you know, it's important, again, this is a very easy thing to do. You can do it with just about, you know, any photograph. You do want to put a little bit of thought into the actual picture beforehand. And at the very least, you definitely want to make sure that the picture itself is actually pretty crisp and in focus. That's really, really important. And just a little pointer, if you're thinking about doing any of these kind of effects with people, um, I'd recommend actually using um, lighting when you're taking the actual photograph. You know, you want to actually light people in a dramatic way so that their, um, you know, certain aspects of their body are brighter than others. And you saw that in the examples in the beginning of the video. Um, and it, honestly, just a cheap, easy way to do that is to, um, here, I'll put a picture up, just literally go buy one of those, or maybe you have one already, is one of those really cheap pole lamps that you can get at like Ikea or Target, you know, the ones that have like the three lights on them. Make sure it's got some, you know, decent soft light or soft white light bulbs in it. And then I would recommend actually putting something over them to diffuse the light a little bit, like maybe a little bit of silk, or if you're in a pinch, um, something like uh, parchment paper or even um, wax paper. Just be careful because it can actually melt. So um, great way to do it. And again, I'll put the example up here. Um, you know, a lot of the lighting you can actually do in Photoshop, but it makes your life a lot easier if you actually do that lighting ahead of time while you're actually taking the picture. All right. So let's move on to the next step. Um, we're gonna actually start you know, making this look a little bit more Sin City-like. So what I'm gonna do, because we have to really darken this up, I'm actually gonna make a brand new layer by clicking my new layer button, which is right here by the trash can. That gives me a brand new layer right above here. You can see we got our checkerboard pattern here. That means that this is empty, there's nothing here. What I'm gonna do is actually Make sure that I have black selected as my main color right here. Remember black is all the way at the bottom of your color picker. No matter what color you're on, black is always at the bottom. And essentially what I wanna do is I actually wanna fill in this entire layer with black. So if anybody has even used Microsoft Paint back in the day, you probably remember the paint bucket tool. Um, it always hides in Photoshop right here with the gradient. Now, you can use this tool, but I actually like to use a keyboard shortcut because this is something that I do a lot. Um, the keyboard shortcut is actually Alt and Delete. If you hold those two together, it actually fills in that entire layer with black. All right, now obviously the main problem right now is we filled in with black, which means I cannot see anything underneath it. So what I'm gonna do next is switch my blending mode to uh, one called Overlay. So right here, this menu called that says normal at the moment, these are my blending modes. And they're basically just different ways to blend whatever layer you have selected with whatever's underneath. So if I um, go from normal, which again, normal is really just solid black. 
I'm going to go to overlay and watch how it changes. So you can see there, it actually combined that black layer with the uh, photograph that's underneath. So it's actually starting to look, you know, a little bit more like how I want it to look. And here I'll put up the example again, just to see how the, you know, the finished product looked. And uh, if you want to see this in a bigger resolution, you can uh, just head over to my website. I've got it under the photography section. Um, so what I'm going to do now, and this is where it gets, you know, the actual part that's a little bit more involved is even though this is kind of looking a little bit more Sin City like, I actually want to um, accent certain areas of this building, basically brighten up parts that, you know, I'm actually choosing myself. So what I'm going to do is actually use a tool called the Dodge tool. And it's over in our toolbar right here above the pen. Um, the Dodge tool, you know, kind of looks almost like a little magnifying glass or a lollipop or something like that. The Dodge tool is actually, you know, it works very similar to our paintbrush, which means I can use my bracket keys on the keyboard to actually make it bigger or smaller like that. But instead of painting with a color, what it actually does is it just brightens an image. So if I start kind of going crazy right now, nothing's really happening. And that's only because over my layers window, I have my black layer selected. I actually want to have my background right here. I actually want to have my picture selected. All right, now something that's really important with the dodge tool, the exposure setting up here at the top, this is basically, um, if you've been using Photoshop at all, it's just like the flow with the brush or the eraser. Basically, if I set this to 100 and I click once, it's going to give me a really extreme um, shift in that picture. And I want to do this a little bit more subtle. I'm going to set my exposure actually pretty darn low, somewhere around 10%. And this may vary depending on your picture, so definitely feel free to experiment with that. I'm also going to have my range set to highlights. And um, for those of you that haven't used the dodge tool yet, the range is actually really cool. Um, it lets me kind of pick which areas of my picture get brightened. So for example, if I've got a picture and I want to um, maybe just brighten up an area that's really dark, which unfortunately sometimes give me some pretty bad results, but I can select shadows and that's only going to brighten areas that are dark. Midtones is going to kind of, you know, brighten everything pretty well. And what I usually like to use the dodge tool on is uh, highlights. So for right now, highlights is going to let me brighten up areas of this building that are already a little bit bright, but it's just going to make them a little bit more dramatic, a little brighter. And um, this is also a great tool to use. I use this um, anytime I'm touching up photos that involve hair, you know, when the sun is actually shining onto the hair, um, you kind of get that really nice textured look and the dodge tool can actually be used to just uh, make that you know, a little bit more extreme and just kind of brighten up those areas of the hair that the sun is already hitting. So anyways, enough about that. Let's go into the picture. So I've got my dodge tool, got it set to highlights and my exposure is set to 10%. And I'm just going to zoom in here just a tiny bit. All right. And I'm going to go back to my...